always do that. Tut. I know. Oh, so. 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 But then can't you take the so off? Yeah, you can. Oh, oh fucking hell. Right, come on. Welcome to another episode of Behind the Billboard. Um, you guys know what we do by now. Uh, we got. Oh, a... go on, tell us. Oh, really? Uh, what are they, the stories behind some of the greatest billboards of all time? They sure are. And it's a podcast series. Yeah. So this week... I'm super excited, more excited than I normally am, which is quite excited. Uh, it's the McDonald's Sundial, uh, which is and has been one of my most favourite pieces of work for absolute years. Um, so, yeah, I'm very much looking forward to hearing it. I know some of the story around this, but I sort of purposely have tried not to read too much because I want them to tell us about how it came about. I worked at Leo's. It was every time you got a McDonald's brief, a poster brief, everyone go... Yeah, it's not as good as Sundial, is it? And you go, shit, it's not. And then you go in those bastards. So um, we're going to meet those bastards. Meet those bastards. Gary Fox Robinson and... Do you know there's another podcast called Behind the Bastards? Is there? Yeah, there is. Is it a Tarantino thing about... I don't know. No, get Behind the Bursters? Keep, uh, it's, no. a, it's a predictive uh, search term on Apple Podcasts. <laughs> we're going to have all our listeners listening to Behind the Bastards sounds now, much more interesting. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, so anyway, today we're going to get Behind the Bastards that yeah. did the best... Yes. Um, out of home campaign for McDonald's ever seen. Gary Fox Robinson and Vince Cook. So yeah, and it's going to be a Skype call, so no sort of looking at each other across the table or. Oh yeah, we're going to get the comments, aren't we? Yeah. Um, the audio on this podcast has gone down a bit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And there's going to be there may be some overlap. I'm going to do a, maybe I'll create a little rule. I'll put my hand up when I want to talk, which my wife has actually started doing at home now because I'm so annoying. Uh, she's making you do that. <laughs> no, she's not. Sorry, <laughs> she made that. <laughs> Um, but it's going to be a good one. I think we just really focus on uh, the actual execution on this, and it may be a podcast all of its own, which I hope it will be. But also, we want to do a thing about Burger Wars, don't we? So get Burger King, McDonald's, yeah. do all that. They might have to come back in and talk. Yeah, we'll actually cool. have a Burger War. Yeah, yeah, that, no, that's an idea. <laughs> Welcome to Behind the Billboard, Gary Fox Robertson and Vince Cook. Um, they are joining us remotely, um, so they are on a blue jeans call. Um, they're dialed in from the US of A. Um, our first transatlantic call for this podcast, which is a, it's a big thing for us. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we, uh, we've got literally tens of listeners, we think, at the moment. <laughs> I think maybe 15. <laughs> uh, parents, friends, <laughs> wives. Yeah. Um, but we, um, we're not sure how much they know about you guys. Um, we've obviously, we've just said your names, but I think maybe it would be good to, um, to give everyone a bit of background about, about you as a, as a creative pair. Um, maybe we'll start with you first, Gary, and then um, um, and Vince, you can chime in. Cool. Um, so, yeah, I'm Gary Fox Robertson, known as GFR. Um, I'm British originally, now based in Chicago, where I've been for 20 years, give or take. Um, and uh, a copywriter by trade. Um, and uh, over the years, I've had the great fortune of working a lot with uh, Mr. Cook. Um, on numerous pieces of business, but the, the most probably the most interesting, at least for, for me, were, were the U.S. Army, um, Nintendo, and McDonald's. Those are the ones I think we did the best work on. Um, and so, so you, that's it. I'm, and that's Gary, it. I'm, you said you've I'm, been. I'm now an official American. Sorry, you've been, you've been in the U.S. for twenty years. Yep, I have. Haven't lost the accent. And Vince, you've been in the U.S. all your life. I, I have. Yes, I've had the good fortune. I've had the good fortune <laughs> of uh, being. Born and raised in, in Texas, if you ever heard of that country, and um, since moved up to Chicago and never looked back. I started an ad career um, all, nearly over 20 years ago, and um, man, this has been a fantastic city to, to drive a career at. If you're hungry as a writer, I'm, a, uh, I'm an art director, that's why Gary and I teamed up. Uh, to complement one another. And as you know, they say great minds think alike. Gary and I are nothing alike. <laughs> I don't know how we did it to make uh, a lot of famous work, but I think that those were the right ingredients that uh, brought us together um, uh, somewhere back in our past. And uh, we've, we've been very close friends ever since, but uh, we've always enjoyed um, writing and art directing and creating together. And especially um, 
the pieces that Gary was mentioning, and more specifically, uh, the Sundial or McDonald's. Yeah, guys. Um, Among others. Could you... We're good, definitely going to get to that. that. That needs to be the meat of our sandwich. And, and can I just say now, it is one of my all-time favourite pieces of work, not just of outdoor, Thank but um, I, I was lucky enough to work for three years at Leo's in London, um, so I know quite a lot of the culture um, of wow. getting an eight ball and working under tarts and, mm-hmm. you know, all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a fantastic <laughs> family. I loved it. I never made it to Chicago, which was a, a, a sadness oh. for me, but... Could you just explain to us a little bit uh, how you met as a team and, you know, maybe just take us a little bit towards Leo's, you know, before, to tell us a bit before you did Sundial. That'd be really helpful. So I can kick that off. So actually we met under very odd circumstances. Um, I had actually um, never produced a TV commercial until I came to the States. I was on my first ever TV production. Um, in the middle of uh, Fort Lewis in Washington State, beautiful part of the world, but um, you know, there I'm kind of a sort of 26 year old Brit in the middle of a, an army post um, in the middle of nowhere, and then I get a phone call from my boss back at the Urban in Chicago telling me that he had fired my art director. Oh, um, nice. <laughs> as you do, and that he was sending uh, a new replacement art director my way. <laughs> uh, and uh, uh, about a day after Mr. Vince Cook arrived. And um, so that's how we met under very sort of odd circumstances. We were thrown into, uh, as I say, it was my first TV shoot. It wasn't Vince's, thankfully. So I got a lot of tips immediately from Vince, got a lot of help immediately. And we just clicked, even though it hadn't been kind of his sort of original concept. Um, to be quite frank, it was a kind of crap concept to begin with. <laughs> so it didn't really matter. Who it was. Oh, go on. Um, You're going to have to tell uh, us what it was now. Gary, you're going to have to tell us the concept. <laughs> it was awful. It was awful. DRTV. It was, um, it was DRTV. It was uh, basically, yeah. imagine yourself as a soldier. The only interesting thing about it, and so it's a, it's a civilian who then transforms over the course of the commercial into a, um, into a soldier. Probably the only interesting thing about it is that the commercial featured a young actor who, um, you know, we didn't really think much of, uh, you know, in terms of uh, he's going to be famous or, or otherwise. Um, um, and even though he didn't necessarily become famous as an actor, he became famous as the husband of an actor. <laughs> uh, he's actually Neil Patrick Harris's husband, David Burke, oh. um, was our first ever commercial. So he was a, a beautiful spirit and a lovely, a lovely chap to work with. Wow. Um, and yeah, it was a few years later when I was reading, you know, People magazine at my local dentist that I realized who this guy was. <laughs> That's so funny. Um, so he went, to, he went on to much bigger things than, than Vince and I ever went on to. <laughs> Vince, how was that for you? Um, uh, sorry, it sounds a bit weird. How was it? How did you <laughs> come to be sent down to the army base to meet Gary? What was your? That was literally my my first mission. I think I had, I had been working at Leo for about a month, and uh, my it's funny enough, my previous partner and I weren't working out at all. I mean, just chemistry is everything, and. Uh, I think within weeks, it just things weren't working. Our boss said, "Yeah, I'm gonna switch things up." It's funny. Um, we're getting rid of. <laughs> he told me in advance, "We're getting rid of uh, Gary's partner, so I'm gonna have you fly out and and wow. meet this guy." He told me nothing about him. I had no idea what I was Jeez. what I was in for. But uh, you know, look at us twenty years later, <laughs> we still like each other. I mean, that's that's um, but. That is so sweet. Yeah, it's, nice it's like thing. one of the biggest blind dates of your yeah. life, isn't it? That. Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. We're like work, work wife, wife and husband. Who's the wife and who's the husband, by the way? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but like, chemistry is everything. And that's kind of the highlight. And I think within moments, you know, we got through a half a day of, of shooting at Fort Lewis out in, uh, it was out in Seattle. And it was just exciting. It's hard not to get excited around all that machinery and equipment and billions of dollars of mm. <laughs> infantry, uh, wow. mechanism and helicopters and all that kind of crazy stuff. And uh, we were intrigued, hit it off. I think we had an equal fascination with that and, and the filmmaking process. We literally just thrown right into it together and uh, we figured out a way to make it happen. And it was... Uh, a pretty, uh, despite what Gary said, it was a, 
I think it was a pretty successful piece they ran for years. Um, so we pulled it off uh, together and then uh, learned how to, I think, solve a lot of problems, tough problems for the Army back then. Uh, I think we were given one of our biggest challenges was for the reserves. I remember us just banging our heads in a room for hours and nights and days just for this reserve assignment that ended up, the solution ended up being like one of the most simple solves of all time. And it was like, uh, yeah. um, I wish I could tell you about that. It's a, it's a print ad, a digital campaign. But it's, it sounds like the, the kind of that adversity of, of the, the, of your first meeting and the, and, you know, thrown into a project together, um, is the thing that has cemented your relationship. You kind of both thrown in, in a, in a kind of a, a situation where you need each other, um, and you've obviously gone on to do to have a fantastic career in 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 creative and advertising. So, um, I'd like to I'd like to move us on quite quickly to your first billboard sure. campaign together. Um, if you remember, the, you know, working together on that on the first billboard. Do you remember what it was and um, and where it went? Yeah, it was it was for the U.S. Army. Actually, it was um, uh, it was uh, a, a billboard campaign that we worked on for the U.S. Special Forces. <coughs> Um, it was the first time the U.S. Special Forces, the Green Berets, um, had ever advertised. Ordinarily, they had previously just um, recruited from within the ranks, but they actually kind of wanted to look outside. Um, and, you know, again, it was a sort of incredibly eye-opening experience. As somebody who was not American, who really had no idea of the Army, no real kind of affiliation with the Army, um, it was just such an eye-opening experience because, you know, my, my experience of, or my knowledge, such as, such as it was, of special forces or Green Berets is all taken from Hollywood movies. And the, and the reality couldn't be any more different. These are not massive, the kind of ripped Rambo-esque people. These are, you know, they're, they're tough and they could kill you with a biscuit, but they're, <laughs> you know, they're, they're sort of wiry, they're super smart, and it's very, very much brains and brawn. American biscuit or British biscuit? Because no, no. Okay. Okay. <laughs> one, one would be a sweet depart. Um, but yeah, so you know, it was it was nice to create a campaign and and to to work with the guys at the special forces and, and kind of get a sense from them of what they did. So we ended up developing a campaign that we called um, I'll, I'll pronounce it in the in the American way. Take a brochure. Uh, take a brochure. Um, where basically sure, we sure. Um, <laughs> asked uh, asked people to, to we put a, a little brochure on top of a billboard. Um, we also put one on the back of a plane. And the idea was that if you could work out some imaginative way to get this, both through brains and brawn, then you were the kind of person we were looking for. Oh, nice! And uh, that was yeah. that was our first campaign that we did. And also, we were very very fortunate to that was our first. Um, uh, figurative trip to Cannes. That was when we first won Cannes. We weren't actually, literally, we didn't literally go to Cannes for a few more years, but... Um, could you, um, that, that just a, as a favour, could you just, if you have a, cop a copy of that, that would be really helpful yeah. for us because uh, we're also going to build content on the site. But um, that sounds that sounds like a pretty cool start. That sounds like a pretty cool... Um, it, was, like, it was printed in the one show for uh, back then, 2008 or something. When was it, Gary? No, maybe a little sooner than that. We'll, we'll get it for you. But, I but yeah, there was a series of three um, outdoor posters that uh, kind of made the, the award circuit for a while and uh, uh, did quite well. Uh, I'd like to add something to uh, Gary's story, um, and that was there's no better proof than living testimonial to support your work and sell it through. We had to, him and I had to go in front of a four-star general and get this approved one afternoon, but we knew that was coming, and that's a, that's always a tough sell because, yeah. you know, they care about not not great ideas. They, they do, but they want to know it works. And uh, me, uh, Scott Simpson, and Gary went down to, uh, was it Fort Bragg? and actually talked to real SF soldiers. Um, we showed them the ideas. We pre presented it to them as if they were clients. And um, we knew we had a hit once they started talking about how to get up on that building or how to skydive onto that plane and climb onto the back of that banner. And, and so they were literally trying to figure it out. And we 
took all their quotes down, and when it came time to meet with the general, he says, well, how do I know this is going to work? He says, well, don't take it from us. Take it from real live nice. SF soldiers. Here's what they said. Great. And he's like, if it's good enough for them, it's good enough for me. I approved. love that. That's an order. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, get, really good. Get me that account man over here. I like the sound of him. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. I suppose we were saying, just as creative people, it's it, it gives you massive confidence once you've, A, written a good one and seen it run and people like it. I know it sounds pretty obvious that but it's uh, an affirmation you're you're doing good you're doing the right thing it must be like when you're a journalist and you write something you see your byline you know it's that kind of and then you go on and on so I suppose if that was you two at Leo's after your your first meet and stuff did how soon after that did you get McDonald's or did McDonald's find you or was it always an open brief could you before we even get into the detail of the the sundial ad i'd love you to just paint a picture of what life was like because i'd be really interested to know you know what kind of level of competition you're up against and what was the scene what the client were they interested in non-traditional stuff if yeah gary and i and you can chime in um gary and i were kind of after that known as a like a, a little swat team i think they would put us on assignments just to um, not our brands that we typically ran and worked on, but they would just throw us on to see what, how far we could stretch and take ideas. And yes, it was a, an incredibly competitive environment. Uh, there was a very, very large creative team department at that time. And, uh, everybody was super hungry. Uh, everybody was highly competitive. Uh, awards meant a lot, but also just <laughs> keeping your job around there meant a lot too. Yeah. And it was a little bit of a survival, but Gary and I, you know, we just, I think we put that aside and just trusted in our ability to uh, foster German A ideas. And uh, we'd get in the room until we were exhausted, just coming up with ideas. We'd debate them. I mean, we were very, very honest with each other, always. And I think that was critical. <laughs> Maybe we caught some. Uh, fights, but there were a lot of hugs too. So, uh, and it worked because uh, the ideas, um, you, in for outdoor medium, I think what we were very good at because of our differences is distilling ideas down to like simple facts and truths and, and ways to communicate and solve these griefs that were, um, not so wordy. I think some cases they were visual, some cases they were an experience, some cases just a few words, but I think we were always very, very good at, um, finding finding incredibly simple solutions for complicated uh, projects. Um, so that kind of paints a picture a little bit about how we started heading into, the, I think, the McDonald's assignment, which we'll talk about, but um, becoming known and well-known within the agency after a few years, starting with that Special Forces Outdoor piece, I, I think we we're automatically, like, enlisted to uh take a crack at this one yeah and and um or the, the mcdonald's one with, with the um with the success of the special forces piece being an outdoor piece did did you kind of get a name for yourself within the agency for the outdoor guys these guys do great outdoor these guys you know if we've got an outdoor part of this brief we should be getting in this team I think there was a there is a sort of tendency to do that even if you've only had one success right you suddenly become sort of labeled yeah. um but quite frankly you know um, if that was the, the sort of the, the, the trick ponies we were, we weren't arguing about it. Um, because the, you know, when it, when it came to McDonald's, um, outdoor was just a, a very much more, um, open brief, um, than perhaps some of the kind of, uh, Happy Meal stuff that, that Leo Burnett worked on. Um, it was actually interestingly, um, it was, as I say, it was an open brief. That when we first started working on on um, sundial and, and later on salads, there was no do a do a, um, a brief. It wasn't a brief that came through saying we need to promote breakfast. Right. Um, it was very much a, a sort of a general brief. We were given some some business challenges. One of which was breakfast hours. Um, and so we kind of responded to that. But we, you know, Vince and I and, and other teams put a whole ton of stuff from, you know, on, on, from salads, from Asian burgers to, 
um, to breakfast, to whatever. We had a yeah. whole bunch of ideas from the cafe to various other aspects of McDonald's. Um, and so it was very much a, a sometimes, you know, as a creative thing, as you know, having a, a wide open brief is, is problematic because there's really nowhere to, to sort of focus and there's nowhere to land. But in the case of McDonald's, we were and the time, um, and most importantly, the support network from an amazing, uh, I have to give a shout out to, uh, uh, an amazing creative director, uh, at the time, I think he was probably an ECD called John Montgomery, who ended up, uh, writing and creating, uh, the crazy ones. If okay. you know that, wow. show, that wow. short show with uh, Robin Williams, that was his brainchild. Wow. Um, and he had basically done a, a, a sort of a kind of a deal with McDonald's saying, you know, we'll, we'll work on all of this stuff. If you give us the opportunity for, to flex our creative muscles mm. every so often. Um, and so, you know, when, when you have that support, when you have people who actually are reviewing the work, yes, so that it, it meets the client's needs. But most importantly, that you know that they're they're anxious for awards and anxious for recognition for the agency as well as for the client. When you when you when you're in that environment, it's really hard to to well, a it's hard to say no and it's hard to fail to be honest. So because we saw a lot of we saw a lot of work happen that we didn't do for McDonald's that was also awesome. Right um, around the same. It was, a, so, it was sort of very much a Gary when fostering. you um, when you did. So was there a moment where everyone said, pens down, these guys have cracked it? Or was your idea amongst three or four that the client were weighing up? You know, or was it something the client saw and went, fucking hell, we've got to do this? You know, was it an unequivocal home run once you'd presented it? Um, or was it still kind of, well, we maybe, how are you going to do it? You know, because that would be, if I was a client, I'd go, great. How on earth are you going to do this? Well, I think that was the, I'm not sure it was a, a home run because I think, you know, we came up with this sort of in a vacuum, right, as one does without any real kind of knowledge of whether it could be done or not. Um, right. We became, uh, quote unquote, sort of pseudo experts on, on sundials and <laughs> armatures and all these other aspects. But at the time, of course, we had no idea. Um, and I think it was just the, the resilience. And, and here I have to give full credit to, to Vince. Vince was just determined and he convinced me that we could do it. He never actually quite told me what <laughs> was in his mind. Um, but once we came up with it, he was so sure that we could do it. I love that. It. I kind of went along with the ride and I think every time. He's, he, sold, he sold the idea we could do it more than the idea itself, if that makes yeah. sense. He's a proper ad man. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Adam, so, totally but, admirable. So Vince, sorry, over to you. It's a bit like sort of celebrity squares here. Uh, Vince, tell us, how did you sell it? I mean, did you, how mocked up was it? Did you have any idea how to do it? Oh did, you know, did you, I, I, I've got, yeah. tell us what happened. I, sure, sure. I got the story about that. Um, I, I remember distinctly the moment, uh, we were in the room presenting it to our CCO and, uh, you know, Gary and I, as, you know, as he said, we had, I think we had to both convince ourselves, like, can this physically be done? Is, is this possible, not only in advertising, but is this physically, are we bending the laws of something that we, we it's just not achievable? And I think, well, yeah, it's a, it's a sundial. They've existed for, mm, yeah, for centuries. I, well, why not? You know, it's no different than, than building one. Um, but then, coordinating the timing of that with separate, you know, breakfast items and menu items throughout the day was like, okay, that was the uncertainty. Um, and we had to rely on much smarter, smarter people <laughs> than us to, than to pull that off, namely a, a NASA scientist. I'm, I'm not kidding. But, but we were at a CCO and um, uh, he had, uh, we had talked, we presented all the work and uh, I think they were they were comped up on boards, and we had a, a really crude, I think maybe even a hand drawing of it. And um, they were sitting on the bottom rail of of the, the conference room, and, and our CCO went down the line and pulled up all the ones that he thought were interesting, and he put them on the top rail. Hmm. But he 
left behind the sundial. No. And I kind of, I think we both looked at each other and freaked out, like, oh my God, you know, everybody had been telling us this is amazing, this is awesome, and he didn't put it up there. And, and I, I think we were both kind of shocked we didn't say anything. And so within seconds, uh, the group of other creatives in the room were like, hold on here. And then one of them went up and put that up on the top rail and said, this is the best thing in the room. We have to do this. He's like, they just kind of looked back and then, hmm, can it be done? <laughs> and without a beat, we said, absolutely, it yeah. could be done. And, uh, and, you know, back to the scientist, that's, that's, I, what was his name? Chris Huff. That, uh, is that when he found out that it actually now. could be done with the NASA scientists? Is that when that was, was that yes, the kind of yeah. the real proof? Yeah, we approached a production studio, uh, that, uh, we knew uh, had an amazing retoucher that we worked for with years. And he, uh, he used to build and design things for other clients and brands and experiences. And, he just happened to be like best friends with uh, a partner of his that uh, that they <laughs> I'm not kidding they they build telescopes as a hobby <laughs> like legit giant telescopes and they position them all around the world and they're incredible guys they're just super fascinated in science and stuff and this was right up their alley and uh, uh, we asked we asked them I said hey we're kind of on the hook you know I think the client just bought this we might have to make this can this be done we finally asked can it actually be done and uh and he said yeah i think so of course let me ask chris and so uh chris was the nasa scientist he literally had built uh parts on one of the viking landings that, that uh were on the mars missions Brilliant. but i think this guy knew what he was talking about and i'm not kidding it the sundial seems like it, it would be an easy make but I think we scoured the planet for every possible location this could be done, and it came down to one place. Really? Like, it had to be at a precise angle, facing the sun at a very particular time of the year, and literally the media, our media buyers found one spot that, that met that criteria. And where was that? So it was Chicago? a blend of media. It was in Chicago, across from Wrigley Field. And that's the beauty of this is that it, it ran once. Or yeah, and for once you can legitimately say it, you can legitimately say yeah. Well, it could only run once because there was only one place it could yeah. run. It's perfect, <laughs> and that's all we needed too. I, mean, I, I think it uh, within days it was it hit it was cataclysmic. I mean, it, uh, people were sharing this thing all over the planet and. And it, I, I think I remember within, you know, the, the end, by the end of the week, it was in some UK um, mm. blogs and, and um, like ad articles and stuff. And we we kind of knew at that moment we had a hit. And although having run one time, it just, just goes to show you the impact one little thing, one little idea can, can have. I mean, it was, I think it, it was the last every... thing I want to let... Sorry, it was it was in every pitch presentation for for years. Was, that's the thing I want, you know. That's the that was in yeah. every the, um, client's deck. The, the thing I'd read, sorry, because I know I've I've been badgering Gary um, about this for about a year or so, and he's told me bits and bobs. So uh, my memory is a little bit foggy, but I remember is either one of our chats, Gary, or something I've read. But I think one of you said one of your mates cynically said that no, that won't work or they said, yeah, well, what about when the sun's not out or when it rains? What is that? What is that? Sorry, can you remind me? Like, was that, you know, those people a little yeah. bit? <laughs> that, that was something that actually, yeah, I mean, there was a lot of cynicism about whether it could work, including, including as, as Vince alluded to, our own. Um, but what was really interesting, I think, was that and we, this never came to fruition, but uh, this NASA scientist convinced us and actually showed us a prototype of how we could do this without sun. And in fact, how we could do this at nighttime. Right. Um, and he managed to design a sundial, which again, never, it, once this became kind of popular and, and, you know, got success, there was a sort of thing about how could we repeat this? And if, if we can't find the right location, is there a way to fake it? Because um, what we had done was not faked, but is there a way of faking it? And he actually worked out an incredibly complicated system uh, where you could create shadows 
using um, using a mechanical billboard that flipped up and created its own shadow, and it would look like there was a shadow coming from the armature. <laughs> Um, so you could technically, he managed to create a sundial that would work at night, um, in a, in a, as a prototype for us when we, when we were thinking about oh, taking this guy. sort of on the road, so to speak. That never happened. Um, but you know, again, just somebody who was, I think for me, uh, beyond just this, this assignment, um, one of the, I think one of the most amazing aspects of working in advertising is being exposed to these people who are just into things and who can do crazy stuff that you have no idea could even be done. And the NASA scientists we worked with is one is definitely one of those guys, as are the special forces guys, as are the, uh, as is the guy we talked to for an hour and a half about lettuce when we did fresh salads. You know, all these yeah. amazing people but, um, who are into things. Can I just go back a minute? So, so you've gone <laughs> in, you've sold it, even though you don't know. No, you, you, wait a minute. You've presented it to your boss. He bypassed it. Everyone said, you've got to do it. Your boss said, can it be done? Vince goes, yeah, of course it can. Then you meet the client. They go, of course it can. Then you meet the NASA scientist. Yeah, yeah of course it can. So, what, so I'm with you. Then you found the, um, the only place on the earth that this thing could run. Yeah, okay. So tell me about, you've pasted it up, yeah? And you've got the, what's it called? The steel arm is there a word for armature it? thank you did you go down there tell me you were sat there one morning like shitting yourself thinking will this work what did you do that yeah <laughs> oh, of course how, to, how could you not right because you cause by this time you know you've convinced everyone of something you're not quite sure is true either right yeah. Um, you've convinced everyone this is going to work and it's going to be awesome and there's going to be absolutely no problems. But, you know, in, in your mind, you're going, this is not going to work. There are going to be lots of problems and I'm fired. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, and then, then the sort of, uh, I hate to use that word, but then the miracle happens, right? And the sun comes up and six o'clock and the oh, shadow yeah. seems to be at the six o'clock thing. And then at noon, the shadow is, oh, is, oh, is, makes an end. Did the client come um, down so with you? I don't remember the client being there on that day, but that may be just my memory more than mm. anything. I know that uh, some of one of our account guys was, and, and, and obviously Vince and I, and the NASA scientist Chris. I don't quite remember whether the client was there or not. I'll be so, honest with you. Uh, so, I mean, I'm still I'm still in awe in awe of it. It's, it's well, fundamentally, it's such a brilliant idea, but it's brilliantly executed. Um, so then it happens, and you get a bit of buzz. But did you really think it was going to hit the awards as big as it did? Or, you know, what, did you have an inkling or? I mean, I think you, uh, uh, you know, you, you, you buy into your own press, right? A little bit. <laughs> um, you know, when, when lots of people around you are telling you it's awesome and it's going to win all the awards going, you kind of half believe it, partly because you want to believe it. But it, again, mm. when, when it actually does win some awards, you're, it's still, yeah. you're still a little kid. So no, what, you're still a little kid on Christmas. What, and what was it like down in Cannes that year for you? I, I imagine it was quite fun. Yeah, actually, bizarrely, we didn't go to Cannes that year. We went to Cannes the following day. Oh, no, you went God. to Cannes, didn't you? I went. went. Yeah, oh. you, yeah. Have you still got I a hangover, Vince? Yeah. Oh, I'm completely hungover. <laughs> <laughs> still. Yeah, that was, uh, that was incredible. I, I have to be honest with you. There, there was a little bit of... Uh, uh, a disappointment because something happens when uh, all the hype filling and people get excited and, and they're, oh, you're going to win and people were talking Grand Prix, Grand Prix and, you know, that, that night um, in Cannes, we didn't win the Grand Prix and I think people were kind of let down. And I'm like, oh God, I mean, it's like one of, won one of the top awards in the world. Can't be disappointed about that. Um, it conceded itself to a, probably even a better idea and it was a it was a billboard made in South Africa by a bank. Oh, I know this. And yeah. uh, they put solar panels on it to uh, to actually uh, run a kitchen yeah. and uh, feed feed some people in need. But that that was incredible. And that was that had come up like within a few weeks of of can and we had been winning um, we had been winning uh, like Grand Prix and Clio and. We got inducted to the Hall of Fame with that, mm. so it was natural to think that he'd come in sweeping 
sweeping it can, but uh, you know, awards are fickle. You yeah, never know. It's a, it, that's, uh, a, and, that's a funny story, not funny story, because I actually, excuse my shit memory, I actually thought it won the Grand Prix. But then I do recall that campaign you talked about, um, which at the time I was thinking, wow, that was, it was that kind of moment, you know, when the doing good thing probably wasn't as big as it is now where we have all of these other categories for that kind yeah. of stuff. I exactly. felt, I, I, I felt a little bit controversial about that day because I, I think, I don't know, wasn't there a thing where you, you couldn't win a Grand Prix for, I suppose it's for a bank, wasn't it? You can't really win a Grand Prix yeah. for a charity. Chari charities can't uh, win Grand yeah, Prix. Yeah, and I suppose right. that, that the lines were a bit blurred. That, I mean, yeah, well, Regardless, I think it's uh, so. So the other thing, so it wins a gold, and you get you get all the applauders and stuff. How long did it stay up for? Because in theory, it should still be up now, and I could go to America on holiday, and I could say to my kids, "This would be really sad if I did this, but I could do this." Hey, let's go down to um, Chicago to that really obscure junction um, and see that. Thing. No, it's right opposite Wrigley Field, one of the there biggest you go. landmarks yeah. in Chicago. So oh, yeah. surely, so surely yeah. it would be like you know, ten things to do in Chicago. <laughs> Number four, uh, the yeah. uh, McDonald's Sundial. <laughs> so was it taken down? I presume it was. It was taken down fairly quickly. I believe it was, was it oh. after about a week, Vince. No, oh, two, you, weeks. You two weeks. You spoiled my dreams. Two weeks. Two weeks. Uh, unfortunately, that McDonald's is not even there. McDonald's has radically changed. They they expanded weekly. But the, the one thing that, you know, when we did go down there, you know, what everyone sees is the, is the time lapse, right, um, of the billboard. That's when you kind of really get the sense of what it is. Um, I just want to point out, um, maybe stating the bloody obvious, but somebody had to man that um, camera. Yeah. Uh, you know, change the, change the battery of the time lapse. You know, the camera was taking a, a photo every five minutes. Um, somebody had to man that. And basically, they, they, they got three PAs, and they split the time, 24 hours, eight-hour sessions each. And they're basically sitting on top of a McDonald's by the vent for eight hours each, oh, just God. watching to make sure the camera doesn't go wrong. Oh, um, watching a shadow. Watching <laughs> shadow. So, you know, the... the, the you know, we we did this work in Chicago, and, and you know, we did this sort of. We came up with the idea, and we were the very fortunate ones to get all the sort of, uh, you know, the the accolades and what have you. But three young, kind of enthusiastic people had to sit on top of McDonald's for eight hours stretches um, yeah. by events you know, to, to make that happen. So I kind of feel I I, I, yeah. I don't know even know who they are. But Do you know what I, I, I sort of? I sense when those Budweiser, um, you know, commercials. Here's to you, three unsung, heroes. Three unsung totally. PAs on the roof, right. getting an ad <laughs> award for Gary and Vince. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, I love that. I, I love the madness of these jobs. Whereby, I mean, on one level, you've got the NASA scientist. I don't know if you get any higher. Excuse the pun. And then you've got these poor, three poor souls from the office. You've got we talked go. about this the other day, didn't we? The kind of those you, you, come, up, you come up with these ideas or you yeah. work on these massive projects and you forget or you, you rock up to a shoot and there's yeah. like twenty five people there yeah. and like six cameras and all the you know yeah. shit, we I just done? came up with this in a room. You know, this is th yeah. a week ago we were just writing this out and yeah, all of a sudden there's all these people doing Crazy. stuff. I suppose that Crazy. is the joy of doing it's worth all the long yards when you get I mean look at us now, we're talking about it what, it's like fifteen 14 years on it's a timeless piece though i mean uh, for me it's one of the you know it's one yeah. of the most famous pieces of outdoor ever um and it's it, or, again we we spoke about this the other day as well there's there, there is these are the most famous ads of of the, the outdoor industry scene the billboard industry scene and they are timeless so this is the kind of thing that you could see coming back again you could see someone running it again saying well it's you know it's it, now it's not a, an ad it's a it's an art installation it's something that is mm -hmm. that, that has that mm -hmm. nostalgia for for a generation because there are people that will will have seen that and they will see it again and go, oh yeah i remember yeah. that yeah you know it, and it's happening now on tv it's happening on online you're seeing ads that you've seen years ago because they're playing on that right. the nostalgia of ads did you um Sorry, as a, an extra thing. So, like, obviously you did the uh, the army thing, and again, yeah, Gary and Vince said, like, the outdoor guys, the special bills. I mean, after this, it would have been out of control, right? Well, you know, did they go... Yeah. So, salads was next. You know, it's a bit like Die Hard 2, 3, 4, and 5. Did, 
Did they keep coming, <laughs> knocking on your door going, we just want another sundial? Totally. Yeah, you then become the, yeah, you know, we were at that point two trick ponies, right? Ah, <laughs> 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 great. You know, we were, uh, you know, I think we joked at one point that we should start an agency called Gimmicky Billboards, you know. Oh, um, <laughs> and, uh, but, you know, again, it, it's, it, yeah, of course, and then you have that pressure, right? Because you have to yeah. sort of live up to that. But at the yeah. same time, at the same time, we were granted, you know, a lot of leeway. We got to work with some amazing juniors who were coming up with ideas too. Yeah. Um, and, you know, then, then suddenly McDonald's pays a lot of attention. And then Leo Burnett is paying a lot of attention. And so you, you elevate inadvertently and not sort of, you know, with any plan, you elevate this notion of what outdoor is. Um, and then people start kind of realizing that, you know, you don't have to make that big Super Bowl commercial, that maybe there are opportunities to, to, uh, to have great uh, pieces in other, in other um, media, and outdoor being one of them. So I think it kind of raised the boats of outdoor within, within the sort of sheltered walls of Leo Burnett, Chicago, at the very least. Mm, I mean, we, um, we felt, and, or we, I don't know, it's sort of like, for me... All through my career, I've seen McDonald's, um, you know, Nike, people who invest in the power of advertising. And when, you know, that this is a long time ago, this billboard, when it was by no means, you know, their first great one. And what I loved is that you, you put your marker down uh, in a fucking brilliant way. And if I was sat, I never actually had the pleasure to work on McDonald's at Leo's because I was running the co-op. But I think every time my pen would just about touch the pad, I'd think, yeah, there's been some really good ones. And that, I remember Tutsal was sort of paraded it to us and it was always brought up. And it, it's a real, you know, I like your two trick pony thing. Some people aren't even a one trick pony. So, you know, <laughs> I, uh, I think, you know, so after that, salads, yeah, you, was that a, do a dollar? Yeah, just salads was, uh, was the following year. And then that was when, that was when, you know, there was a lot of attention and it was sort of, that was very much, again, still not really a brief. It was do stuff for McDonald's and here's, here's like four or five of our things that we want to we wanna, uh, focus on. Uh, a bunch of teams that we put, everyone put stuff on the wall. Um, and we tried to make it, in as much as one can, there was a little bit of competition, but we tried to make it a bit of a democracy. Um, and even though at the time, you know, Vince and I, and then there was another creative director team who had done um, Shamrock Brian Shake, Avery. which was also installation piece, Brian and Avery. Um, we sort of, like, the four of us were kind of in charge of all of these juniors um, and sort of sifting through the ideas. We did try and make it a democracy. We were, again, very fortunate that our idea sort of rose to the top. Yeah. Um, and maybe maybe it wasn't as much of a democracy I'd like to think. <laughs> um, <laughs> and you know, and that's when fresh salads happened. And again, uh, it was in the same place at Wrigley. Uh, we didn't really need uh, the sun. We needed some sun, but right. we didn't quite as much um, precision. And again, that was a, a great opportunity to meet somebody. I, we spoke for an hour and a half to somebody. Uh, or rather, he spoke to us for an hour and a half about different types of lettuce. Oh, so you, so University you traded, so you traded NASA for some horticulturalists and <laughs> yeah, yeah, some like top lettuce expert. I didn't even know such a thing existed. <laughs> um, and again, it sounds it sounds incredibly dull to talk about lettuce for or listen to somebody talk about lettuce for an hour and a half. But this guy was so into it that you couldn't help be you know like into it yourself. Um, it didn't really make a difference in terms of what we were doing, um, in terms of what our actual role was. But, you know, he was he led the charge on choosing the right lettuce that would grow. Um, the lettuce that we grew on the billboards for fresh set alads was, it, it took three weeks to grow. Um, it was tended every night and watered and, and pruned and all of that good stuff. Um, so we were very, very grateful again to have a, um, an expert and again very grateful to have probably the same three PAs stuck on top of a McDonald's <laughs> this time it was three weeks not two um, so and they got they got that knock family. on the door they the, those three PAs sat in the room got the knock on the door oh no right. we, they we're, they, they we're back on the, the roof the, aren't we did it get the same yeah, funny enough the the, the, the the challenges for this this piece was uh, I think maybe even 
tougher than the sundial. We, we used the same uh, NASA engineer. Now, he was just a great engineer. And uh, I, I remember him having a discussion with us about hyponics and how to water and keep these, these salads fresh and alive and have a, like a, a water system behind the billboard actually flowing through all the roots to make it grow and the challenges of, of finding a, a position to anchor all, all these seeds so they would germinate uh, in complete um, invisibility and this thing just starts to appear. I also remember that the big, one of the biggest challenges is a week and a half into it, it was like a, one of the really harsh Chicago summer, a massive thunderstorm came yeah. through and nearly tore all of that lettuce off. Oh my and God. And some of it had to be restored and replenished and it was, it was all, and you can see it if you play the, uh, if you play the time lapse, you'll see it gets really dark and these yeah. rain clouds are just pounding this thing. And yeah, then, and for one second. Unfortunately, uh, fix it in post. yeah, Mother Nature and the gods let us, uh, Lettuce, lettuce. <laughs> yeah, and, and did you get? Um, I suppose after the the sundial success, people were probably waiting for the next one. And you put fresh salads up, which is an, a great visual piece. Uh, you know, it's green. It's got a slightly different message. Were, did it get a similar reception? Um, oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I would say yes, but at the same time, kind of, it's sort of like. Oh, another, you know, I think that Sundar had been sort of, uh, because, you know, the first, I think, the first of something, uh, at least within our little world of Chicago, yeah. that, that first big billboard that we did um, was was so different that then people kind of have a higher expectation, right? Yeah. Um, so even though it got a lot of, of kudos, it and, you know, was very fortunate to, to, to win a lot of awards. In fact, interestingly, it won quite a lot more awards. Um, or more, some more prestigious awards than, than Sundial, interesting. You're kidding me. Um, well, it won more a can That's than it so did. That's so weird. Than it won... Right. Um, and, yeah, to this day, I, I'll be honest, I, I find Sundial much more interesting as yeah. a piece of... Uh, of yeah. Uh, can I ask, um, so, you know, all things come in threes, so what was the third one that you never got to run? Was it like a... a a bun or a bit of bacon or I'm trying to think of what it's else be a you... cow <laughs> cow yeah, yeah. Did 100%, you... 100% we had so many <laughs> we had a farm <laughs> not a billboard <laughs> fuck it no, yeah see... we had so many and I, I don't I don't even remember half of them but there were so many amazing ideas that, that came out of not just us but uh, Brian and Avery and, and a lot of the juniors who were who were mm. working with us that um, there were more ideas than it was and again it, maybe we can take a wee bit of credit for that that there were more ideas than than, than the, the client could run yeah um, there were, and there were more great ideas than the client could run um, yeah. but, and I mean there's got to be the uh, there's got to be the one that got away what's the you know not necessarily for McDonald's what's the what's the one that got away from you as a as a as a pair you know you you, you know the one that was stuck on the bottom rail that you really did think that should have been on the top rail i don't know vince can you think of one i think uh i, I do remember i don't know if you remember this but uh the there was a the sundials there is a sundial society uh that <laughs> asked gary and i to come speak at their convention uh, and uh you remember that and uh there's yes, like this whole world of people fascinated with the sun out there and and uh, the things you could do and there was like a lot of uh, there's a lot of beautiful, amazing technology that, that comes as, as a result of like solar power, and um, you know we we turned down unfortunately the, the, the convention talk. I don't know what that would have been like. A lot of, a lot of weirdos <laughs> talking about sundials for hours and weeks. But uh, what came out of that was uh, another uh, a university had actually reached out to us about creating music with um, solar power. So right. they found a way to engineer um, to engineer uh, using the using sunlight to and tubes of, of water hooked up to uh, speakers and the whole thing was solar, solar powered. They had talked to us, approached us about like, well, we're doing this this project for our university. We've got this technology. What do you think if you were to like market it, or what do you think if it were? to uh, put it up as your next project and build it. And, yeah, uh, cool. We actually started talking to them about it. And uh, the goal was to 
I think it would have been too expensive, but the goal was to uh, have the sun kind of, as you walk by, it would magically uh, play the da 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 oh, um, great. for you on the billboard, and just uh, by the sun. It's like music from the sun, and I think, you know, I think Gary and I worked on that for a few weeks before we, I think we realized it was just, it was not affordable to do. That was like one that got away. I would have loved yeah, I could That's see something. that. I mean, you know, maybe bottom drawer it, bring it out again. Yeah. Um, we, uh, we're we asking everyone we talk to um, similar kind of stuff. Obviously, we're always talking about specific billboards people have done. But one thing we're always asking is uh, what is people's favorite billboard? So uh, as a sort of closing piece, do you two individually have billboard which is your absolute favorite whether it's one of your own or something you've seen recently or in time we're just we're just fascinated to know what turns people on what's their favorite billboard i i very much have a a, a favorite billboard it's, it's not recent it's um i i still to this day remember it being a, a kind of an awakening for me about advertising and what advertising could be um you know, ironically, it was a billboard and, and, you know, what happened later on, but it certainly never thought. It was for, it was in the UK and it was a billboard that was made of litmus paper. Oh, yeah. And yeah. I'll have to track it down. You probably remember we this. Know, it yeah. said something like, about when acid rain was a big concern. Um, and basically, if there was acid in the rain flying, uh, falling over London, the, we would be seeing red, you know, the, the actual yeah. litmus paper, the billboard it's, would turn red. To me, that was the first time I'd ever appreciated, and I was young, I'd ever appreciated the idea that this ad, the advertising could be entertainment. Yeah, that's, I'm so or pleased you said that. Yeah, it was, well, I think so it was, me, I, forget, I forget even what it was for. Was it, well, I think it was might it have been Greenpeace, Gary, and it was, um, it's kind of on our enormous long list uh, is, yeah. that we've compiled of stuff to talk about or to even try and track down the people to talk to, because again, it is like you say, it's a, uh, that was kind of a moment, a marker, when you, like you said, you went, oh, my God, so you can change the colour of the paper because of the thing in the water and the rain and, oh. And it sort of made you feel many things at once, didn't it? It made you think, oh, that's clever. And I'm going, oh, shit, yeah. there's acid in the rain. And, yeah, okay, that's a great one. Thank you. How about you, Vince? Man, there's something going on over there in the UK. I'm telling you that one of my favorite pieces that ran not too long ago was for British Airways. Happened right there near you in, in Piccadilly, right? And uh, I'm sure you know which one I'm talking about. Um, they had this animation of a, of a boy who would just walk out into the billboard. It was a digital board. And he would just point. And the timing of his pointing up into the sky coordinated with the flight path of British Airways and it was just so wonderful how they could predict yeah. um, the flight patterns and, and marry that with marketing and it was just like one of those things that gathered I think thousands of people just came to look at this thing and awe oh, it was so simple yeah, it, it didn't have to say much but it, it just made you love that brand and, and uh, yeah, it's a, the engineering it's, of it was it's, it's a big one over yeah. here and it won yeah. uh, many awards oh, and um, it's yeah. another one that's on our list to talk to it's definitely it? on our list yeah. I think we're <laughs> quite sadly we're sort of not sadly but we're trying to you know do old school billboards modern ones you know there's no yeah. there's no rule here about it. it doesn't have to have one it can it's just stuff where there's a story behind it I'll um I'll tell yeah. you a, I'll tell you a funny yeah. story about the BA one, Vince. Um, about a year later, yeah. we had a client come to us um, who are a competitor of BA. I won't I won't name who it is. Um, and they said, oh, we we saw the ad they did, but did you know that um, most of our flights are on time and most of BA's land late? <laughs> um, do you think we could do a spoiler campaign where the little boy is back and he points at another delayed BA plane going <laughs> over? <laughs> um, and we said, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And we got quite far down the line, but they um, they got cold wow. feet in the end and they decided not to. That's interesting. Uh, I'm, that's I'm pleased awesome. you picked those two because they're very, um, well, they're really iconic. They're really famous. They're, I guarantee if we spoke to the teams behind that, there would be hopefully a story as good as yours um, for the Sundar. So, um, yeah, I just want to say thanks for jumping on the call. It's been a little bit weird as having four separate, well, certainly you there and us here, but it's I've been really enjoyable. I've, I've, I've loved hearing the story. 
Um, and yeah, thanks. thanks for being part of Behind the Billboard. It's been a great chat. Yeah, thanks very much, guys. Thank you so much. Absolutely, our pleasure. Good luck with everything over there. That was I want to work with a NASA scientist. Oh, yeah. I, d- I don't know. Just I want to have that guy on speed dial. Everything, hey. everything in America is just bigger, isn't it? And, and I know we try, but... Well, I've got my go-to guy, James Dean, um, who anyone who's worked with me knows has, on any of these crazy projects has met James Dean. Right. Um, real name. Uh, I bet he gets all the girls. He d- oh, he's on, the, on our US trips, he just... <laughs> the, the customs guys yeah. get him every time. Hotel. Yeah. Um, but he's my guy. He's like my math guy. Or it's like, oh, you know, uh, think about this. Sure, hold on. Give me uh, half an hour. And he comes back with this super technical drawing of something. So he's one of those tech guys. Yeah, yeah. He's a TD. I love the fact that this that this industry, whether you're on your side of the fence or mine, you meet so many. If you have you have, if you have an interesting enough project, you meet randoms. I mean, talking about lettuce. Yeah, and again, we met the lettuce guy. I mean, that is great. I mean, that's okay for a day. You want to do that like for a month. <laughs> But um, yeah, they, it didn't it didn't disappoint, did it? I, I thought they were really great. They're really humble, um, incredibly sweet, smart guys. Obviously, yeah, they got known as the they were the Billboard guys in uh, in Leo's in Chicago. Yeah, that's, you know, it's, it's and it's that's high accolade. They, mm. they had some. Well, it's like you said, it's still st- that would stand up now. I mean, it's just such. A, I still I honestly of, think there's a market for this kind of the those timeless billboards. I know I keep. Bleating on about no, it, no. but it's. Uh, I mean, I'm a bit of an outdoor geek, so I never um, I hadn't spotted. I hadn't spotted. <laughs> <laughs> you just look like a really no, regular Spurs fan. Uh, uh, John will tell you, John's our tech, everyone. Um, yeah, that I'm geeky about the planes I get on as well. Okay, that could be another po- podcast. Get Dreamliner. behind the planes, yeah. Oh, God, I haven't been on a Dreamliner for ages. <laughs> Such a nice plane. I've got to go, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I need to get home. So you can follow us. On Twitter. Hey, this, hold on, hold on, hold on. This is gonna. He's gonna be. He's gonna okay. Right. So follow us on Twitter at getbtb. Yes. Yeah. Get in. Instagram at get behind the billboard. There's a website called www.behindthebillboard.com. No, there's no, not. Bollocks. He's the. Uh, he's the. Oh, shit. Sorry. <laughs> you can't bang the table. Uh, the website is getbehindthebillboard.com because. Behindthebillboard.com goes to that right, um, see. the real estate guy. Yeah, I'm, don't go there. I mean, I've shot my load. I've done. I've got to go. I can't <laughs> say any more of these. <laughs> go on, Dan. Tell us where it all is. Uh, right. So, on Instagram, remember it's get behind the billboard. On Twitter, it's at getbtb, and our blog is getbehindthebillboard.com. Thanks, mate. Thanks.